The second example in section 1.5 deals with negative exponents. Now, when you, th when you see negative exponents, for instance, let's say you have 2 to the negative 3 power, negative exponents basically refer to fractions. And what I want you to think about is, let's say you have a fraction 2 thirds, which is to the negative 4 power. Anytime you have a fraction or a number to a negative power, it's the same or it's equal to the reciprocal of that fraction to the positive power of the same number. So what I put in, in the blue box is actually equal to each other. It's like taking the fraction, flipping it upside down, and then making the power positive. Now, let's say I have 2 to the negative 3 power. In high school mathematics, we neg never leave powers negative. This, what I'm circling in red, that is bad. So if I have 2 to the negative 3 power, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a fraction by putting 1 in the denominator. Now, I take the base, which is 2, and its power, which is negative, and I'm going to move it to the denominator or the bottom or the opposite side of the fraction. Now on top, we still have a placeholder. The placeholder is still 1 on top. But now on the bottom becomes 2 to the positive 3 power. So basically I've done what I'm circling, and I'm pointing an arrow at the blue box. Basically I've taken that fraction, flipped it upside down, and changed the power to positive. So this would be my final answer, or if they want you to simplify it, 2 to the third power is 8. So therefore that would be the final answer. Okay, let's continue to practice. Let's say that I have the fraction 2 fifths to the negative 2 power. Again, we don't leave things with negative powers. This is bad mathematics. Well, I could do one of two things. If you recall, I could take that fraction and flip it upside down and then just change the power to positive 2. That would work, which is equal to 5 squared over 2 squared, which is equal to 25 over 4. Or, I could, from the very beginning, I could write it as 2 to the negative 2 power over 5 to the negative 2 power, and then flip the fraction over, which becomes 5 squared. I'll take the I'll take the two bases, 5 to the negative 2 goes to the top, or the numerator, and then 2 to the negative 2 power goes to the bottom and the denominator. So basically, when you have a negative power, it means take its base and a power and move it to the opposite side of the fraction. In either case, I would get 25 over 4 as my final answer. Now, let's deal with algebra. Let's say I have the fraction a to the negative 2 power times b, the whole thing divided by x to the negative 3 power. Now again, if, if uh, I explained it clearly and you kind of catch on to what I've been saying, anything that has a negative power goes to the other side of the fraction. Now, I'm going to draw a fraction line, and the first thing I notice is b is to the positive 1 power. So b is going to stay in my numerator. a, as I've circled already, a has a negative 2 power. So I'm going to take a and its negative power and move it to the other side of the fraction. So I'm going to take a and move it to the denominator and change its power to positive 2. Last, in the denominator of my original problem, I have x to the negative 3 power. Well, that's going to move up into the numerator and become positive 3. So I have now taken all my 
negative powers and I have changed them to positive powers. So what I have written in red would be my final simplification of the problem that I'm pointing the red arrow at right now, what I began with. Okay, now it's your turn. I'm going to clear the board and I would like all of you to do this one. R t to the negative 4 power over w to the negative 1 power. And I'm going to put a 2 up here as well in the numerator. Stop the video and go ahead and simplify this problem and get rid of the negative exponents. All right. If you did this problem correctly, you're going to notice the 2 and the r both have positive powers. The 2 is to the first power. The r is to the first power. So they stay where they're at. I am going to take the t to the negative 4 power and move it to the denominator to make it positive. And I'm going to take w to the negative 1 and move it to the numerator to make the positive 1 power, or the negative 1 power, positive. And of course, we never write 1s. Now, obviously, in the numerator, that's 2 to the first power, r to the first power, w to the first power. But as you all know, we don't write first powers. So the final answer that you should have written for this problem is what I have written in green. 2rw divided by t to the fourth. And I hope that explains how to do negative powers for you.